In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the interior of a book you can self-publish on Amazon that's selling particularly well at the moment. In fact, one seller is making between nine to $20,000 a month with this type of book. In fact, they're probably making a little bit more. So if you're interested in creating a second income or a full-time income or even a passive income by publishing on Amazon, then watch along as I show you how to create one of these books. Now, if you've not been here before, my name's Paul Miles and I do videos on how to make it, keep it and grow it. And that's your money I'm talking about. And if you do like videos like that, then please do give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell to receive notification of when I produce more videos like this. So the book in question that I'm going to show you how to create is called a scissor skills book. Now these are designed for kids around the three to five mark and they're designed to help them um, improve their fine motor skills by using scissors to cut out shapes and lines in books. And as I said, they're selling particularly well. Now I've recently done a video on this niche which I'll leave a link to before, where I sort of look at the niche, show you the interiors, and show you the, the important keywords which are vital to getting traffic to your book and to making those sales. So what we're gonna need to start with are three things. One is our graphics software, our graphic design software. The other is our actual graphics or images to create the interiors of these books. And the third bit of software is the, the software that's going to bring it all together so we can create our, our PDF that's ready to upload to the KDP platform and create our self-published book. Now, the software I'm going to be using to create the pages today is called Affinity Designer. Now, there is other software. Now, what I recommend doing is using vector editing software. Uh, vectors are very good because they don't lose the quality if you expand them in size. And it's very easy to manipulate the images and to do what I'm going to show you today. Now, other software that's available. Now, there's free software, which is Inkscape is one example. The other is Gravit um, Designer. Now, that's free for the basic software, but you do have to upgrade uh, with a payment if you want, I think, the pro version, which has a few more features. And the other common one is Adobe Illustrator, but that's uh, on a subscription basis, but very good. Probably the what we call the gold standard, although what I'm using today, Affinity Designer, I think it comes a very close second, if at all second, to Adobe Illustrator. Now, the beauty of uh, Affinity Designer is that it's only a one-off payment and they're currently running a promotion, which makes it half price. Now, it's currently selling for £23.99, which must equate to around the $30 mark. Now, the graphics I'm going to get today, I'm going to find off Creative Fabrica. Now, that's my latest go-to website for finding um, interiors, graphics and fonts. It's got them all. You can buy bits individually or you can buy a subscription package. Again, I'll leave the link to that below. It is an affiliate link. I do receive a small commission. It doesn't cost you any more and it helps me keep this channel going. Um, other sources that I use or have used in the past are things like Vecteasy. Dot com, which is very good for getting vector uh, images. There's also things like design bundles. You can find royalty-free images on things like Unsplash and Pixabay as well. And sometimes you can pick up vector images there. You've just got to be careful that they are in fact royalty-free. Royalty -free. And I do advise any image you download from there, you do a, a search on Google Images just to check that it isn't actually, you know, for sale under license from other software platforms because sometimes um, images can fall through the net on, on those particular sites. And in fact, you think they're royalty free and they're not and it can get you into a bit of bother. Okay, so we're gonna be using Affinity Designer. So now we need to go and get our graphics. Now, if you don't want to create the pages yourself, you can go to Creative Fabrica and do a search for Scissor Skills Interiors or KDP Scissor Skills and you'll find that there are ready-made interiors to create these books. Now, there's not many. There's only a few here. Now, the slight disadvantage with the fact that there's not many is 
a lot of people could go along and use these particular interiors which means you might run into issues of duplicate content. But let's have a uh, closer look at a, a couple of these interiors. We've got this one here, which looks very basic, and I've downloaded it to have a look at it. And you can see there's just basic lines for kids to cut along to help with their scissor skills, there's shapes, and there's images of, of animals. Now, this one's very basic. This particular interior has one significant problem, in that there are no blank pages between the images. So if a child was to cut along one of these uh, pages, they'd be cutting into the page on the other side as well. So you could download this um, and use a bit of software to merge it with blank pages, if you like. So you could have the, the image page, then a blank page. The other interior that looked a little bit better was this particular one. Again, I downloaded that to have a look. And now this has got color images, but if you were to upload this to KDP and just uh, click on the, the black and white image upload, it would convert these to black and white. The only issue would be, would be that if people did the look inside feature, saw color images, and then they received the book and their black and white images, you could get a negative review. So bear that in mind. But you can just get a, an idea here that, uh, of the images that kids can, can cut around. It looks very... Uh, basic a bit more detailed than the previous one I do prefer this particular interior and they've got the blank pages as well so that when they cut around these particular images they're not damaging the, the the images graphics on the other side of the page but again if you get hundreds of people downloaded these images and just uploading them as is to KDP you could run into duplicate content issues but you could use some of these pages and combine them with your own pages that I'm going to show you how to make today. Okay, so now the first thing we need is a, an image of some scissors. So again, on Creative Fabrica, we've got this little image here um, of some scissors. It says commercial and full print on demand usage allowed. Whenever you use graphics from any site, you must make sure you're familiar with the licensing and it's not much good messaging me, asking me, is it okay to use? Because this is your business, you need to make sure you're satisfied with the licensing agreement. And understanding the licensing agreement is actually part of this whole business. And the problem is a lot of these sites do check or do change, sorry, their licensing agreements from time to time. So it could be that you ask me and I go, yep, yeah, it's all good to go. You use it and find out that it's not and you get into trouble with Amazon and, and lose your account. So please make sure you're familiar with the licensing yourself, okay? So now what we want to do is create this sort of a page that you can see here. So what we need first of all is our images of the balloons. And when we drag them across to Affinity Designer, this is what we have. Now I only need the outline of the balloons here. Now this is the beauty of Vector Software. You can move and edit all the individual components. So what we're going to do, holding down shift, is just click on the, the three components we need, which are these three here. I'm going to click on copy. Go and now open a blank page or new page on Affinity Designer. And this is going to be an 8.5 inch by 11 inch. We're going to click on create and we're going to paste our balloon onto this page and reduce it in size. And we're going to move this over here just adjust the angle ever so slightly. Okay, now holding down Alt and the left click of the mouse, you can drag a copy of this image across and again, just alter the angle just to, to mix it up a bit. And again, holding down Alt, drag off another image there. So we've got our three images on the page. Now we need our, our lines. Now to draw the wavy line, I'm going to click on the brush tool and we've got width 16 pixels and we're just going to draw a wavy line. Now what we need to do is just click on the, the move tool and we're going to turn this into a dotted line. So where it says stroke, top right corner here, click on this little dotted line just there. And you can see if I just enlarge that, we've got our dotted line. Now what we need to do next is where it says dash, we're gonna change these parameters. So we're gonna, the first box we're going to put in the number two 
second box the number three and just click on one of the other boxes and we can see we've got our dotted line now and that looks pretty good already okay now we need our zigzag line now rather than using the brush tool for this we're going to use the pen tool so we just click and just move like so and then we want our square sort of toothed line so we're going to use the pen tool and click on our balloon and just create a square sort of sawtoothed pattern. So there we have our lines that kids can cut along. And now we need our little scissor graphic. So we'll just go back to our scissors here, copy and paste. So we'll just drag that down. And so we just need to move this into place and just change the angle like so. Press the Alt key and then you can just drag across another one of these scissors again, change the angle according to the line and again, Press down the Alt key, drag across. And there, we've got our first page. So kids can cut along the lines here towards the balloon. Now you could think up some other images to do this sort of thing with. You could have the path to a house or path to a, you could have a, instead of a balloon, a car or say a garage. And at the bottom where the scissors are, you could have a car so kids could cut along. Imagining they're, they're drawing along a road from the car to the garage. So use your imagination to create these different types of pages. So that's the first type of page done. So the next type of page we're going to do is an image of an animal or you can use an object, whether it's a truck, car, mermaid, unicorn. Today we're going to use a, an animal, we're going to get a frog and then we're going to have it so the kids can cut around the image of that. Now the third type of page we do that you find in these books is called a cut and glue page. But I'll tell you about that in a moment. So what we need to do is go to Creative Fabrica and find the image of a frog. And I just did a search for frog and found this one here, which I like. Now you'll say, notice here, it only says commercial usage allowed, nothing about print on demand. That's fine, because I'm not actually gonna be using this to create the interior book. This is just for demonstration purposes only. So we'll go ahead and download that and just drag that into Affinity Designer. Now we've got all these components, colors that we don't actually want. Now you could go through each one and just click and delete. A quick way would be to go to the Layers panel on the right-hand side here. Click on the first colored component there. Go down, hold down Shift, click on the last colored component, which selects them all, and just drag them to the bin and there you see straight away we've got our black and white frog image which we then put a bounding box around command c to copy and then we just paste this onto our blank page our 8.5 by 11 page now we want to create a dotted line around the outside of this frog now you can do it with the brush tool better way is actually to use the pen tool and to start at one point and then use the bezier points to change the curve and then press down alt remove that little bezier pointer and then go on to the next one and you can see it's quite easy then to adjust the curve and you can just work your way along again i'm just doing this very quick just as a, a demonstration but you can see here we get better better curves more even curves and then what we end up with is something that looks like this we've got our image and as i said it could be an image of anything with our dotted line around we go to our scissors, copy, go back to our frog, command V to paste our scissors in place. And then you could put this anywhere you like along the dotted line, which indicates to kids where to cut. So that would be another page that we've done. Now, the third one, which is a bit more interesting, I think, is the cut and glue pages. And what these are, are shapes that kids can cut around and then glue them onto a blank piece of paper or cardboard or whatever to create another image. I'll show you what I mean. It is this here. And you can see there's all these shapes here that kids can cut around, glue them together to make this image. So again, we're gonna start with the image of our frog. Now we're gonna draw a bounding box around our frog Then holding down Alt and left uh, click of the mouse, just drag a copy of the image there and then just holding down shift, reduce the, the size. Now this is the beauty of vector editing software. We can just draw a bounding box around the components we wish to, to move. So here we've got the head and all the, the components inside, and we can just drag this to one side and rotate it like so. And then we've got the legs, 
Let's drag them up there. And we've got these legs, these frog's legs. Drag them up there. And we've got this circle for inside the body. We're going to just drag that up there. And we've got the main bit of the body, which we're going to drag down here. And I'm just going to move all this down a bit so we've got a, a bit of room to manoeuvre in. Now, you can see there I've got quite close to the left hand side. Now you need to make sure you've left enough space for the for the margin. These pages are going to be no bleed. So now what we need to do round each component of the image is draw a dotted line. And again, I recommend using the pen tool over the brush tool. And it's just a case of, as we did before, just drawing a line around the edge. Alt to get rid of that bezier control and then drawing another one and just adjusting the curvature with these controls here click alt to remove and again like so again this is very quick won't be particularly exact and so what you would do is do the same as I've just done there round each component of the image and you could add some text at the top and what we end up is a page like this and again we've copied and pasted our, our scissors graphic into there so kids know where to cut around so kids can cut around these shapes glue them onto paper or card and they've got themselves a nice picture and also a big component of these is the coloring aspect so you've got the coloring the cutting out and in this case the gluing as well so it's a it's an activity book that, that encompasses a number of different activities so now we need to put all these components together to create our PDF book now most of the books that I've seen have something like 60 to 90 pages. So probably have somewhere between 30 to 40 images because you're going to have your page with the images on and you're going to have your blank page. Now today I'm going to be using Keynote to create the interior of my book. So we've got our blank document set up on Keynote and we've set the custom size to 8.5 by 11 inches. You'll notice here on Keynote it's actually in points which is equivalent to 612 by 792 points. But on PowerPoint you would just put in some, put in the size 8.5 by 11. You can do what I'm going to show you in Canva, InDesign and Affinity Publisher also. Now we've got our one page here so we need to copy that, Command C and then just paste and you'll see we build up the number of pages for our, our book. So you would go down doing 60 or 90, however many pages are in your book. And we're going to go to the first page. So we go to Affinity Designer, select our first image. And it's very simple. It's just a case of dragging a bounding box around our image. Command C or Control C to copy, going back to Keynote and just pasting. And there we've got our first page. Now we need leave the second page blank so that doesn't the image doesn't get damaged when kids cut on the page. And so we go to page number three, then back to our graphics uh, program, bounding box around the image, command C, control C to copy, and back to keynote and paste in place. And so we repeat again for the, the next image. And this will go on to page five, leaving the, the pages blank and so on and so forth. So you'd build up your book, go on to page seven next, and then page nine, paste in your images until you've built up all the images in the book that you want. And then it's just a case of saving that as a PDF file, and that will be ready to upload to the KDP dashboard. Now, if you do like the idea of creating these types of book, then click on this video here, where I look more in depth on the niche, but more importantly, talk about those keywords, which are essential for getting traffic to your book, which is the first step in making sales. Thank you very much for your time. It's very much appreciated. I hope you found the video useful. And until next time, goodbye.